Hello, farmers, and welcome to the harvest season. My name is Al. And my name is Rochelle. And we're here today to talk about farming games. Woo! Woo! Rochelle, you're back. I'm alive. I'm so happy. Yeah, I haven't gotten got yet. We'll see how the future goes. Oh, don't. Please, please, let's not. I don't, I don't want to live in a world where I don't have you to talk about farming games, Rochelle. <laughs> huh. That's sweet. I wish my employer felt the same. Uh, <laughs> and that's the last sad thing I'll say, I promise. That uh, doesn't feel like something you can promise. It is not, but I'm promising anyway. Uh, <laughs> I'm back. How are you? I missed talking about farming games with you. Uh, yeah, I, I, it's, it's, it's been a wild ride. Uh, <laughs> yeah? It is, it is a time. It is a place. Uh, it is it is life. Yeah. Um, what it what is what is life? I don't know. Uh, should we talk about some farming games? I would love to. Uh, let's let's talk feedback first because we have some feedback. Feedback is my favorite thing. Uh, now I, I should apologize to these people who have fed back because I, I'm pretty sure this is from March. Uh, <laughs> but we'll go for it. When anyway. was March? Um, time. <laughs> I know more and more people are becoming aware of this, and I've been saying this for literal years, but I would just like to remind everyone that time is not real. Uh... <sighs> uh, so we got an email um, with no name, uh, which is fine, but it means we can't credit you, which is very sad. But um, anyway, uh, and they have uh, said that they love the podcast and want to support the show. Are there ways to do that, which is not the Patreon, which sadly I cannot do, and leaving a review, which I've already done. Um, and essentially, uh, I mean, I mean, the the biggest thing that if you really want to help support the podcast, um, and you you can't uh financially support us, which is totally fine. We do not expect anybody to no. financially support us. Um, then the best things to do are to uh review, as you say, and and just share the podcast with people who might like it. That's that's really it. Mm-hmm. That's it. Just yeah. share and keep listening. And hopefully we continue to earn your respect. And that's all that matters. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your email. Yeah. Nolan. Thanks for writing in and being consider considering us and our well-being. Uh, no, no name. Ano- anonymous. 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 Yeah. Anon. Uh, we also have two reviews. Um, one from Rusty Rooster 72 um, saying they came back to the podcast after a while. I, I, I'm not sure. Have we been all around long enough for someone to come back after a while? I mean, we've been doing know. this for more than a year. I know. More than a they, year and a half. Maybe they listened for like <laughs> six months and then took a break for six months and then came back. That is a while. I mean, I you'd have to ask Rusty Rooster 72. Uh, yes. Well, they, they say that they have... Uh, no, they say that the podcast has come a long way, uh, which uh-huh, is very true. Thanks. Thank you very much. I, I, yeah. I th- I'd like to think we have. Yeah, I do too. And hopefully we'll continue to get better. That's yeah. the goal. Thank you for your review. We also have a review from Bone Penny, which is what an amazing, name. amazing name. Glad we're on the same page there. <laughs> I was going to like, I was going to be real awkward if I was like, I love this name. And you were like, this is the worst <laughs> name. And then, and then our listeners would have to pick sides and it would be a whole ordeal. And it would be, a, but no, we agree. We're good. Yeah. Uh, anyway, they said that they, they almost didn't listen to this podcast because they thought it was limited to farming games. Uh, however, it frequently veers into life sims and puzzle games. Yeah, I don't think we ever set it up expecting to go into puzzle games, but there there you are. Um, pie you know cross what? all the way. <laughs> yes. You know what? That's fine. I am. If you had asked me this in the first couple months, I would have been like, no, we're doing farming games. And, you know, I have evolved since then. And I'm glad that you enjoy the wider variety because so do I. Thank you for your review. Thank you very much. If you would like to email us or uh, review us, uh, you can do so in many ways. Uh, And, of course, they're different ways, so I shouldn't have grouped them together like that. If you would like to email (laughs) us, you can do that from our website, harvestseason.club. And if you'd like to review that, you can do that where you can review podcasts. I think all of the ones we've had so far have been on iTunes, but you can also do Spotify and Podchaser. I think that's it. Those are the main places that do reviews. If if you can review on something that you use that we don't know about, send us an email saying, I reviewed you on a, a pod, pod app 315 uh, yeah. and let us know. Yeah. So, Rochelle, it's been many months. What have you been playing? Oh... 
Oh, I was going to make a comment, uh, and then I realized I said I wasn't going to say any more th- sad things. <laughs> so what have I actually been playing? Um, I've been playing some Animal Crossing a, a little Shock. bit every day, because that's how you play Animal Crossing. Oh, uh, beg to differ. <laughs> so do a lot of people I know. Um, I was very angry about some of the ways people have been playing Animal Crossing, and I think I realized it's because... Everyone is playing Animal Crossing like they want their real lives to be and go back to that. <laughs> and I never, and I'm trying playing Animal Crossing. I'm trying to play Animal Crossing exactly like my real life is not, which is what other people are trying to emulate. And I think that's what causes a lot of the tension there. I'm like, no, please <laughs> let me just have my non capitalistic utopia <laughs> in this one place, please. Uh, but I've been enjoying it a lot. Uh, I really enjoy the June wedding season event because I don't know if you or the listeners know this, but I'm really, really into anything where you can take pictures in it. That's my jam. I think uh, you've mentioned that before. <laughs> I'm sure I have. I really enjoy it. I'm excited for diving. I like Animal Crossing a lot. It's great. Um what else have I been playing? I've been playing a little bit of a visual novel game called Butterfly Soup. I really, really, really enjoy that. I would suggest that one, even though I haven't finished it. Um, I've been playing some Summer and Mara. Um, nice. More than I thought I would have time for, uh, because it turns out that's a fun game. I was gonna, uh, I was gonna ask you for a very quick review of what you thought, but I guess it's a fun game. That's probably <laughs> the quickest review we're gonna get. Right next. <laughs> okay, I will not elaborate. Um, well, if there's anything you particularly want to elaborate <laughs> on, then feel free. Oh, well, I mean, I could. I think it's fine if it's not interesting. I'll cut it out. You know, that's how it goes. Sure. Uh... <laughs> and I'll keep that in either way. <laughs> <laughs> Just like sure, and let's talk about a different game. <laughs> um, <laughs> I I really enjoy it. I think the gameplay is really fun. I'm not I think I was thinking about this maybe after a few hours of playing we're like there's if there's a scale of farming relevance in games and at one end you have like Harvest Moon which farming is explicitly the main focus of the game and at the other end you have My Time at Portia where they pretend farming is the focus but it yeah. has approximately half a percent to do with the entire game (laughs) um i feel like mara is closer to the my time at porsche end but not fully at my time at porsche level because you do still have like you actually have to farm to be able to do stuff yeah but it's not the main focus of the game and i actually do and i'll probably talk about this a little bit in their main topic but i really enjoy being able to have a balance of different types of activities and like being able to farm for a while if I just feel like farming and harvesting on my home home island and then change up and take a break from farming entirely and just go roam the seas for a few dozen days. You know what I mean? Like I I (laughs) enjoy being able to do multiple different things in a game. Uh, I know some people have had issues with the translation not feeling entirely accurate, but that's not something that's been bothering me personally. I think probably because I spent a lot of my youth watching fan subs of anime. Um. Yeah, I I noticed a few of them, but I, it didn't really it didn't really annoy me. I was just like, yep, yeah, it's fine, whatever. I don't. <laughs> it's, it's... Yeah, it honestly did I, not ever I, I didn't occur get, to me until I didn't I get heard... confused. You know, that was yeah. the important thing. Yeah, like I totally understand what it was saying the whole time, and I mean, I'm I'm very aggressively a linguistic. D- descriptivist like i don't believe in prescriptive language i think basically my rule is if you can understand them there's no point in correcting anyone on anything um because the communication is the main focus and literally i never even considered it for probably at least a good five or more hours of gameplay i'd have to pick up my switch which is a foot and a half away from me to tell you how long i played uh (laughs) but I literally never considered it until I was listening to one of the very few gaming podcasts I actually enjoy. Uh, and they mentioned it as something that had like disappointed them. And I was like, oh, I never thought about that. So, uh, But I've been enjoying it a lot. And I, I'm going to continue playing it because I really do enjoy it. And I want to continue the story. So I think so far, and this is a running thing for me, I think my favorite part is the characters who are just have a lot of personality and i like them a lot Mm, yeah i I think i would i would agree on a lot of your assessments of that game um it is definitely closer to the porsche side of things um Mm -hmm. but uh not to the 
a laughably laughable degree like Mm -hmm. Portia when they call themselves a farming game I'm like no no you're not (laughs) you know Mara when they call themselves a farming game you go well uh, okay fine (laughs) you know I think Mara could hit the technical bar of passing yes exactly whereas Portia could not no uh and and I think that was probably part of my issue with Portia is they bigged Mm -hmm. that up so much as a farming game and you're just like "Eh, eh." they and that, I think, is why you should focus on uh, being more honest in your advertising, because yeah. both of these games, I think, kind of advertise themselves as farming games. Portia, as I recall, and if I am wrong and I just missed something, please tell me, listeners. But Portia was very aggressive, like, we're a farming game. And most of, like, the majority of their advertising was straight up being like, look at all these farming farm crops, animals, farm And Mara was more like, we're a farming game and you're going to take some high seas adventures and there's farming and uh, emotions, (laughs) which is a much more accurate portrayal, even if it did lean a little bit too heavy into the farming and the advertising. And I think that might have a little bit to do with it of just not feeling like I was lied to by the advertising, you know? Yeah. Uh, Anyway, I I like Mara. I've been playing some Mara. Uh, I finished... A couple Picross games, but that's to be expected. Uh, it's one of my favorite stress relief games. So <sighs> it sounds like a lot, but that's what three months of coverage. <laughs> there was a significant portion of time there where I did nothing but do some Animal Crossing chores every day for half an hour. So uh, how about yeah. you? Ah, good question. Um, I have been playing a wee bit of Animal Crossing. So. Hmm. Uh. I really struggle with playing it a little bit every day. And it's not that I want to just keep on doing more. It's just that if I'm not playing it as my main game, I I just struggle to pull it up, Mm -hmm. right? And I do understand and I do want to get to the point where like every morning I just spend 15, 20 minutes on Animal Crossing. And I think that would be really good. I just struggle to do it. You know, and it's not that I don't enjoy it because when I do load up the game, I will play it and I will enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And I I have done some this week because of the new update. But I just struggle to do it every day. And, I, and I, I'm not sure why that is. Um, I think part of it is to do with, like, if the Switch were able to, like, hibernate a game so you could just go straight back into it where you were and it just saved exactly the same so you don't have to go into, like, the loading screens and stuff like that, I think it would be a lot easier. But, like, I have to go, oh, I have to go out my game. I have to load up Animal Crossing. Then I have to wait for ages. And then yeah, I have Animal to do Crossing my stuff. Yeah, does have a big load right up front and then i have to go back into the game i was playing before and go through the same process again Mm -hmm. a bit annoying it's the same same thing i have with pokemon like i want to spend more time in pokemon as well and do the same thing but yeah i just there was a pokemon thing recently oh there was the dlc have you not you not paid attention to that yet Uh, that wasn't in an an, an accusatory way for the record (laughs) (laughs) no i just oh time isn't real okay um um, I don't know. That's kind of a tough issue to solve because it's like can't really solve loading screens for you. No, I think. And I think especially like I was thinking about this recently talking to a friend of mine who is more of a one game at a time person and is having trouble balancing like playing Animal Crossing every day with playing a different game. And they're a one game at a time person where I think a lot of the time it it has to do with a little bit of a shift in your gaming preferences and how you kind of structure your, your gaming life. Yeah. Um. Which is kind of a harder issue and I think might have a lot to do with whether or not people like, for example, this kind of game, like the real time, the everydayness Mm -hmm. of Animal Crossing. Like if you're not, if you're used to only playing one game at a time until you finish it and then you're done with it, it's really hard to play a game where you are supposed to play a little bit every day and it's not supposed to be the biggest focus in your life. Yeah. And and I guess y- you don't notice that at the beginning, right? Because if mm-hmm. you are a play a game all the time, right? There is plenty to do in Animal Crossing to start with, right? And I, I went mm-hmm. from weeks playing Animal Crossing as basically my only game. And I, mm-hmm. I didn't feel burnt out for weeks and weeks, possibly a couple of months, right? Mm-hmm. But once you get to once you get to that, oh, okay, that's not my f- single focus game. That's where it just goes from 100 to zero, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. Um... Whereas, was... whereas when I tried um, Animal Crossing before, yeah, I just never actually got into it in the first place because of the same thing. And I, I don't know mm-hmm. why I got into it this time, but because that, ne- that didn't become an issue. Yeah, <laughs> I think the only suggestion I can kind of give is 
I don't know, kind of what I do where I, most days, I don't spend a ton of time in Animal Crossing. Um, Usually just the weekends because that's when I have time. But every day, I kind of have like a small checklist where it's essentially, (sighs) what's on my checklist? I could pull up my checklist, but I'm choosing not to. Um, (laughs) I talk to all the villagers every day. I check the shops, I do my money tree and my money rock and uh, water my flowers. And then now I'll probably try and find Pascal every day uh, because the mermaid furniture is fan favorite in my household and we all need it now. (laughs) Um, And that's it. And like sometimes that's 45 minutes of playing and sometimes that's 10. And it doesn't matter what it is. I do it and I'm done. So maybe just sort of having like a specific focused goal of saying like, okay, I'm going to go in and do this. I have a purpose to play this game might help. Yeah. Yeah. No, I do do actually have a a checklist and I went through that religiously for weeks. Uh, But that was when it was my game, my my Mm -hmm. only game. Um, Yeah, it's just, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'll get there. I've done it a couple of times. The update has helped, but I've still not Mm -hmm. played every day. I don't. I don't think I've actually played any game today, but that's probably just because I've been so busy. Yeah, life is busy. I, I will also say it's okay to not play every day too. Like, I miss a day occasionally. It's not the end of the world. But my my Nuke Miles uh, thing me. What, what, oh what's no! The word? How will you get more Nook Miles? You don't. I have so many Nook Miles. It kills me. Like and. I would like to be explicitly clear. I don't really try to get Nook Miles. If I happen to get a Nook Miles Plus thing or something, I happen to get it, but I don't go out of my way. Like, I don't look at the list and say, well, I need to do this today. I literally do not pay attention and only accept it when I get it. And I have 150,000 Nook Miles. Like. We are so different. We are so, so different. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, a lot of the tasks are stuff that's part of my, my checklist. Like. Hit a rock eight times. Okay, well, I'll do that looking for my money rock or water uh, yeah. your flowers or yeah. change yeah. your clothes, which I Just, do every day because it brings me joy. I, I, for the record, I don't go through the Nuke Miles Plus stuff, but I, I do generally look through the list of all the, like, oh, how many, you know, whatever I've got, how do I get to the last point? Just because I want to have those completed. It's not because I want to actually mm-hmm. get the um, the Nuke Miles. Uh, yeah. Which I guess my perspective is I also like to complete the achievements and I'm fine if it takes me a couple years. It took me a few years to finish all the achievements in New Leaf. So my my kind of perspective is a lot of those things are just you're, you're being rewarded long term for just playing the game as normal. Essentially, like like what's yeah. one that I, I know I'm getting close on uh, crafting tools. I think the maximum the last one is at like 3000 tools or something like that. Um, crafting 3,000 different tools. And, you know, I'm well on my way there. <laughs> I stopped buying tools specifically so that I could craft tools to get to that point. Uh, oh, but yes. I also don't sit and spend hours only crafting tools just to try and get the achievement because I know eventually I'm going to hit it. And that's fine. Uh, yeah. I feel like we have this exact same conversation every time we talk. <laughs> I feel like we do too. And that's why I stopped in the middle of that thought. I was just like, we're done. We're, we got this. It's okay. Uh, so apparently we're still talking about what I've been playing. So I've also been playing some Burnout and some Pokemon <laughs> um, and some Summer and Mara. Um, not in a single day. They've been like chunks over the time. I am mm-hmm. very much enjoying Summer and Mara just now. Uh, but this is not the Summer and Mara episode. No. <sighs> Wow. You, you, our, the podcast so far has been longer than the last one. Uh, <laughs> that's what happens when you actually have someone to talk to. <laughs> so, shall we talk about some news? Let's talk about some news. Everyone's favorite section still, I assume. We, uh, who knows? Who even knows? I mean, it's been their only <laughs> section for about a month, <laughs> two months. Uh, have you seen that we have some Harvest Moon One World footage? <gasps> No. Is that yeah, you actually haven't. I truly have not. Oh wow. I don't think you understand the kind of bubble I've been living in where all I do is work and sleep. <laughs> all right. I think we need to get you to go watch the video and the YouTube video and then we'll I'll cut the silence out and we can talk about that then. Okay, is this gonna be a good or a bad? Just 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 go watch it. It's a minute long. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
It's not that I hate this. <laughs> it's that oh, this is weird. It's that this really feels like an advertisement for a, a, a well running GameCube game. Yeah, doesn't it? Doesn't it? I, this is the problem, right? I'm not someone who's like, oh, graphics are really important in a game, right? But it turns out graphics are really important in a game. <laughs> it just there's something like to go from because right at the end we get this image that we got from the box art which i talked about a couple of episodes ago did you see this uh-huh. image when it came out like, uh it looks familiar so probably like, yes like this image is really is nice a... and really intriguing and the graphics look really nice in this and it's nothing like the game i'm just sorry i hit play again i i'm very graphics neutral as a person, I will play any game if it's good in some other regard, even if the graphics are horrible. Yeah. And I don't even necessarily think this is horrible. Um, and I I mean, aesthetically, it's not I mean, it's definitely not the same. But it, for, like, for example, it's not terribly far off from like Summer and Mara. I mean, it definitely feels more uh, very basic first draft 3D model mm-hmm. than Summer and Mara does. But I think part of the reason it's concerning is because of the history of other Natsume Harvest Moon games where yeah. like there were a couple that were essentially glorified phone games Yeah, and that's yeah, I more think... what I'm worried about is it kind of gives this indication of we're not shifting our priorities very much which sends the message we're not changing very much from the last game which yeah. means this is probably it sends off a little bit of a red flag, not because the graphics are inherently horrible or anything. I mean, the cows are cute. Um, sorry, this is like the third time I've played this video. I'm just playing it as I talk. But it's more about the history of the recent installments in the series mm-hmm. from these developers. Yeah, and, and this is the thing, right? And when we got the announcement, I was actually hopeful for something interesting. Like, I, I felt like they were getting that something needed to be interesting, right? And, and possibly maybe that interesting just comes from the story and maybe they mm-hmm. focused more on that rather than the graphics. Mm-hmm. But my word, I don't, like, is this is this the best it is? Because this is the first thing, like, they didn't show us anything to begin with, right? It have been a couple of months since they announced the game. And mm-hmm. this is what they then decide this is what they're going to show us as the first, hey, look, here's our game. And the first screen you get is the most underwhelming thing I've seen <laughs> from a game this yeah, year. And also, it's just, ugh. Also, there's no, is there words in this? Like audio words? I don't think so. Okay. I was like, there's no closed captioning. I can't tell if maybe they're telling me information because I have it on mute so it doesn't mess up my recording or something. But um... I don't remember there being, but again, I am also not listening. One one I... one thing I do find interesting, right, is uh, w- they show you the barn, and uh-huh. in the barn there are both cows and chickens. Yeah, like a real barn. You n- you never keep your cows and chickens separate. Yeah, in well, the real they're world. separated inside the barn. They seem to have little fences, but I just think little that's fences interesting. Fences that they that's can all. just walk outside of, as you can see on the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> The cows can just easily walk over and trample the chickens. It's fine. It, it is the one thing that's really annoyed me about these games since Stardew Valley, which was my first one. It's just this weirdly artificial idea of these animals go in this one and not in that one, and these ones go in that one and not this one, and there's no overlap. And and it's just it literally just seems to be about the size of the animals. Um, I think it has more to do with you don't typically keep your cows with your chickens in real life. Uh, typically chickens live in a chicken coop, which is much smaller because they need significantly less space than cows. Um, I do think it's really weird when games uh, will make you have different buildings for like very specific different types of animals. So like it makes sense to me to have to have your birds separate from your livestock, but you can have cows and sheeps all in one and it's yeah. weirder to me when you can have cows and sheeps not in like if you have to have a cow barn and then also a sheep barn that's weird to me uh but as a general rule i don't think it's weird and i think that might just have to do with me knowing that farm life in real life you know what i mean yeah 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 it's kind of a given for me like uh i think i don't know i'm sure i've said this before but uh a couple generations back in my family was all farmers Mm -hmm. and like part of my childhood was like let's go down to texas to visit the farming parts of the family and like i i know what a farm looks like i've been on a farm before so i I guess i guess the problem is that you know i'm thinking of this not like real life right because we're we don't play games to be exactly like real life Mm -hmm. and it just feels like a weirdly artificial thing to include in your game 
Um, yeah. When there are so many other things that aren't realistic, right? I don't yeah, know. I can totally see that. I guess what I'm trying to say is the idea of this is so default to me that I never questioned it. So, like, I totally see what you're saying, and I've never thought about it before. So, I'm just anyway. worried that those cows are going to trample those chickens. <laughs> I. <laughs> anyway, oh, so boy. I'm a little hesitant because of the past history of these games since the natsume split off but i'll give it a chance it could be that it has a fantastic story and i don't really care i'm just worried yeah i i'm i'm still very intrigued by the story uh which um the you know the for those who aren't aware the very light story information we got is along the lines of uh farming uh is like a past thing and you're trying to recreate it um in a in a future world um which sounds interesting to me but Mm -hmm. it sounds but okay before i go into like intense social commentary oh boy i was just gonna say like that sounds like a really good topic for like the nowadays of where most people are entirely disconnected and do not have a real comprehension of where their food comes from i think that could be like a very interesting there's potential to do like some real social commentary there and like have a culturally relevant story yeah um i don't know if i have high hopes for that but well, we'll see. that's the thing. I don't know. I, I really, I really want them to make a good Harvest Moon game. I I'm do too. rooting for them, and and uh, I, uh, I'm, I, I get so fed up of the people who are like, "Oh, give the name back." And you're just like, "That's so like." Can you not be rooting for just more good games? I mean, I get yeah. the name thing is confusing, and they probably should have done at the time. Um, tried to sell the name or maybe the others should have tried to buy the name who knows who's at fault right but let's be honest it's too late for that now it's not going to help things it's going to make things even more confusing if they do that now <laughs> yeah we should we should be able to have more than one big name yeah <laughs> series of farming games i guess we'll see we will anyway we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> we will see we will you know, see there's a new animal crossing update Animal Crossing. I love Animal Crossing. Yeah, there's a, a. I don't know why they called it Summer Update Part One. I mean, that just feels like they're setting them themselves up for uh, missing their next release date. But we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh. I mean, Part Part Two could come next year. <laughs> <laughs> they have a whole oh. year to do the next Summer Update. Yeah. yeah. So the next update comes out and it's Autumn Update, and you're like, what happened to Summer Eight Part? summer up so i'm sorry it would be fall update wouldn't it and they're like what happened to summer update part two <laughs> just and the wait. next summer they're like summer update part two and and everyone's like oh i forgot about that because it's been a year <laughs> uh, well diving's back shock surprise i wasn't expecting this at all i was totally expecting this it was data mined ages ago it's um, diving <laughs> it's it's interesting um i'm not a huge yeah. fan of the mechanics of the swimming around it feels annoying but in what way? So having to press A to swim annoys me. Like you, you can just hold A. Okay, right. But my point is I can't just use, like, it, when I'm walking around, I just use the analog stick, right? When I'm swimming, I have to use the analog stick and press a button. That's kind of annoying to me. And, and I get the idea of, like, oh, you're trying to actually propel yourself along. But, like, when you're walking, you're not controlling your actual two feet, right? Like, this, this the point of games is to abstract these things. It just It's annoying. <laughs> That's all. And, and 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 there was That's no fine. information about how to do that, right? So you jump into the water and you're like, oh, I'm swimming so slowly. And then you try a few buttons and you're like, oh, this one makes me faster. Okay, great. Thanks, I guess. Ugh. Hmm. Look, I haven't decided how things. I feel about this so far. So Which part? The stuff you're talking about. Because okay. on the one hand, I like, I kind of like when games just make you explore yourself. And figure things out yourself. I'm one of those people who likes to press all the buttons. Um, but on the other hand, to be able to buy a wetsuit, you have to sit through an explanation <laughs> of how to use the wetsuit. Yeah. Yeah. And if you have to sit through the explanation anyway, I feel like they should have included that one part. Yeah, and it's not like it actually abstracts it all into the game lore, right? It actually says press A to jump into the water. Mm -hmm. so you don't have that excuse either i i don't know it's not i i'm more annoyed about the fact that you have to press a to swim at all rather than the fact that they don't tell you right because it was literally just like oh i'm slow press buttons oh, okay i figured out how to go faster i right? mean 
Is pressing A to swim faster any more or less annoying than holding B to run faster? Well, but it's not really holding A to swim faster. It's holding A to swim at a half decent speed, right? Like, if you don't hold A, you hardly move at all. You're basically treading water at that point, and you're just kind of moving your body slightly, right? Well, like, sometimes you're not you need that swimming. to sneak up on a creature. <sighs> Some creatures will, like, run away from you. Well, I mean, could you not swap that round then? So, like, have a sneak action. Like, I feel like the sneak action is the one you do less often. Oh, okay. I do a lot of bug hunting. <laughs> well, sure. It's just yeah, a yeah, okay, yes, how we play yes, all. Yes, but when you're bug hunting, that's the point. The sneak is when you're holding a button. Because that is done less often than just general walking. So it should be the same thing with swimming. Okay. I don't disagree with you. I just am neutral. <laughs> okay fine whatever there's diving <laughs> it's fun you get some sea creatures Oops. you donate them to the museum you still can't donate a manila clam and you still can't stack them and i don't get it <laughs> they are their own category of thing they're made they are a resource made for fish bait no the, the the whole point was that they were going to be a sea creature that's what we thought was happening and that's why I they mean, weren't that's stackable. what you thought was happening Ugh. I just, I don't, they really annoy me. <laughs> they really annoy me. It's like the thing in the game that annoys me the most. I love this game, but I hate this game. Well, then just don't go clamming. It's fine. I don't. That's what I do. I don't. I just buy it off people, which is ridiculous. I buy fish bait from people. Capitalists. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to. Um, That's fine. You don't have to enjoy it. And if... Someone else just really likes clamming and wants to sell you their fish bait. That's fine. Not everybody has to like every aspect of the game. Are you enjoying diving? I am. What's your favorite it, sea creature so far? Uh, the the sea anemone was fun. I, I the sea anemone. The, the enemy of my anem anemone <laughs> is my frenemy. <laughs> I love the puns so much. Um, I, I nothing the puns. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, my favorite so far is hmm hmm. I like the seaweed. And hear me out. Have you it's ever placed? <laughs> have you ever placed the seaweed on the ground, like no. placed as item? It's just a pile of seaweed, and it's amazing. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's my answer. I I I had I had a lot of fun. I spent like an hour <laughs> diving. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the way I play this game. I don't, 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 I don't at me, please, about this one. Uh, I spent like an hour diving and got loads of things, and it was good fun. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. It's great to have more things to, um, to collect. I collect things. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's. I think it's kind of cool. I'm a little bit sad that we didn't get another museum expansion, but also I like that it's in the fish tanks as well. Like, mm -hmm. it's cool. It just makes it more busy. Yeah, I like it. Me too. I like this a lot. Have you seen Pirate Gulliver yet? Uh, no, not in not in my game. I've I've I seen had, videos, but no, not in my. Game. I had Gulliver the day before the update. I oh well, I've got a worse one. <laughs> I had Gulliver the day of the update, but oh, because no, <laughs> I know, but because um, you don't actually get the chance of getting Gulliver until you have the wetsuit. which meant that my game turned on and went, "Hey, you've got Gulliver. You've not got the wetsuit, so it's normal Gulliver." Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry, man. I'm like, oh, maybe next week. We'll see. <laughs> maybe next week. Oh. Sorry, okay. I just story topped your Gulliver. <laughs> it's okay. That was beautiful. <laughs> Anything else interesting in this update? Uh, I like Animal Crossing. Have you got the... I ordered the wetsuit and snorkel mask from the nook stuff have you ordered the nook ones uh no no i haven't i didn't realize there was one there yeah there's one in there it's like i don't know what yours is selling but mine is selling just the stripe one that's like a shorts and tank uh, strap sleeves uh the nook one is like a full body wetsuit Ooh. so it's I, I black in that. that very particular shade of nook green uh mm. i like it a lot that does sound nice. I think it's my favorite. So you can buy that from the Nook stop. I don't know if people are aware of that. So I wasn't. So thank well, you. Well, now you know. The no more way. you know. So that's Animal Crossing. Uh, the next update will be in the summer, maybe. 
we'll, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll let you know. Summer part two, twenty twenty one. We will. We'll see what what next features announced that we already know about. Um, <laughs> sorry, that's mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very excited about everything that's coming. So, Rochelle, um, Garden Story was meant to be coming out in spring. It was, you know wasn't it? It's not coming out in spring. That's okay. Coming out next year. Are they adding a whole bunch of new stuff? They are. They're adding a whole bunch of new stuff. So they have a uh, uh, publisher, I think. Ooh. Yes, they have a new publisher for the game. Um, and uh, Oh, not a publisher, a game investment fund. Um, oh, so it sounds like they're being okay. financially supported, uh, which allows them to keep going for longer um, before they release, which is obviously what they wanted to do. And I'm mm-hmm. all for... Uh, artists original visions being fulfilled in the way that they want them to as things move on agreed i mean that's about it there's going to be more stuff in it it's coming out next year i'm a little bit sad that it's not come out already but you know what i already have too many games just now (laughs) i was gonna say i gotta play animal crossing and i have to finish summer and mara which i can't tell you how many hours i've played yet uh and you know what comes out in a week oh no what friends of mineral town oh no i forgot (laughs) <laughs> it's fine i think it's slightly more than a week for you i think it's the 10th here and the 14th <laughs> so it's a week on tuesday for you no i no, i have to catch up on animal crossing <laughs> and <laughs> and pokemon and harvest moon oh no <sighs> huh, there's so many games to play speaking of games to play uh there's a uh, village monsters update village monsters this update uh 0.75 or the foundations update uh brings um story cutscenes and heart events i love those things they are they are good yeah and 15 percent off exclamation point yeah also if you'd bought the itch bundle the racial justice bundle that had village monsters included in it as well Mm-hmm. A little wood. There's a new, another little wood update. Oh, little wood. Little. Wood. I love little wood. We're so Ze- close, aren't we? Zero point nine seven. Oh, it's so close. I'm just waiting for version zero point nine 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 five. Uh this brings cloud saves and achievements. I love achievements. I'm truly neutral on cloud saves. When will? Nintendo have achievements? That's the question. Um, Probably never. I'm going to say something that may or may not be controversial. I truly don't know. Oh, no. I personally prefer having achievements in a game as opposed to on the system the game is played through. So, like, Interesting. achievements on the Xbox or achievements on Steam. Uh, because I like having it there right with me while I do the things. Mm. Um. I don't know. I truly don't know if that's a controversial opinion or not. <laughs> I don't know. I can tell you that Littlewood uses Steam's achievements. Yeah, that's so. fine. I, I don't hate it. I just prefer it when it's within the games. Like, I like to yeah. open up my phone and go to my app and say, these are my achievements. I think my reasoning for liking systems supporting achievements is that it makes it so much easier for the developers so a lot more of them do it. So I think mm. most developers don't do it when they don't have support for it in the system because it's so much work um because like when you're using one of these systems it's literally just a function call when you hit a point it's great easy done lovely whereas if you have to do everything that's a lot of work (laughs) you know that makes sense i totally i see that i will agree with that point i still prefer it within the games yeah that's fair but I would rather have achievements on the system than not have achievements at all. Yeah. I like achievements. I think they're fun. Um, I mean, presumably they can integrate the achievements on Steam into the game as well. So you could show what you have, presumably. But I don't actually know because I've never dealt with the API for that. What do you think? I am a game developer. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know these things. (laughs) We are so close to 1.0 on Littlewood. So close. The We're end of there. this month. So close. <sighs> Have you ever opened your phone while you're diving in Animal Crossing? <laughs> no, I haven't. You just like open it up like you normally do, but it's completely submerged in the ocean. <laughs> and I know 
I know that like waterproof phones are a bigger thing in Japan, and I know they're becoming a thing in the U.S. But it's very startling every time. <laughs> I'm just like, oh no, <laughs> my phone is dead <laughs> every time. That's my tangent. That was amazing. You're welcome. You know what else is amazing? What's that? Turnip Boy commits tax evasion. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Don't let me down. Yeah, it's uh, it's again still coming. <laughs> Twenty twenty one. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't actually know whether that's new information, but I put it in there anyway. It might be new information. I lose track of these things. I didn't have it mm -hmm. in my releases spreadsheet, so I'm going to assume it's new information. I think that's fine. You never know who might be hearing this for the first time ever. So, uh, but yeah, and there was a trailer, right? There was a new trailer. A new I forgot. Exciting trailer. I had forgotten how much I just aesthetically really love this game. It's so good. I think I'm, I think I'm kind of a sucker for two D. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just I like it Welcome. a lot aesthetically. <laughs> you got me, okay? You got me. You know, we already have five games confirmed for next year, and there's probably more. Fantastic! That if if we get at least one more, that's a game every other month. <laughs> well, Great. let's. Well, let's be honest, Rune Factory 5 is not going to come out this year, right? <laughs> uh, probably not. Remember Rune Factory 5? <laughs> Have they we'll mentioned it since that, that initial announcement? Not that I know of. That's been over a Maybe year Maybe they're now. hoping we forget. They're no, hoping we over forget. two years? No, 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 no. I, I don't, no over I don't a year. Remember. February 2019. Oh my gosh. When was that? <laughs> In the before times. In the before times. Oh, uh, yeah. In the period of not quite as dreadful as now. And hey, oh no, <gasps> we did get second piece of information about Rune yeah? Factory 5. And that came this January. And uh, that piece of information was that it wasn't coming out before April 2020. Well, that's relevant today. Yep, it's not coming okay. out in the past. Good. <laughs> Neat. Beautiful. Uh, and uh, the most exciting news, Rochelle. The absolute most exciting. Absolute most exciting. Ooblets Early Access coming out on the 15th of July. That is in exactly a week from when you're listening to this, if you're listening to this on the day it comes out. 15th of July. Now, they've also announced pricing information. It will be $24.99. $25. Uh... But on launch week, which I presume is the early access launch week, because that's how games work nowadays, it will be $19.99. $20! That's five buckaroonies less. I have uh, factored that into my calculations for my money, uh, assuming that it's a direct one-to-one -one calculation uh, conversion between dollars and pounds, because uh, our currency is trash. <laughs> money isn't real. It really isn't. And neither is time. These are things that are only as real as we decide them to be. <laughs> Rochelle, are you going to buy Ooblets in early, early access or are you going to wait? That's a good question. That sounds like you've not thought about it yet. <laughs> it sounds like I literally never considered until this moment. Here's the thing. Do I want Ooblets or do I want the Pokemon expansion? Ooh. Ooblets. You're right. Uh <laughs> So Look, probably, I, yes. I, I love the Isle of Armor in Pokemon, but it can wait. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's Ooblets. Come on. Yeah. Like, I honestly think that it probably would will feel more worth the money for Pokemon if you buy it when Crown Tundra comes out and get both DLCs at the same time. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Like, if I'm going to if I'm going to really, really dip back into Pokemon as opposed to just little bits here and there, I'd rather save up a real big chunk yeah to really not and i think waiting for the second dlc would probably be how i would do that yeah it's more like it's more like getting a new pokemon game rather than a dlc at that point mm -hmm. as well exactly less than two weeks till ooblets early access we'll actually be able to play this game <laughs> i'm so excited i've been so excited about ooblets for like a thousand years H have we been uh, talking about this since our first episode i think we might have been i've been talking about it since before the first episode before time oh. even existed, I was excited about Ooblets. 
<laughs> I'm really excited. Um, it's so close. It's so close. Oh, it's the fifteenth. Oh, I don't change over my calendar. Oh, what <laughs> day of the week is the fifth? This is why we need calendars, Al. That's a Wednesday. What the heck? It is a Wednesday. Should I, should I take that day off of work? Uh, I guess we'll, that sounds like a next week Rochelle problem. Yeah. Okay. And that's the news. And that's the news. News. Yay. Yay. So, Rochelle, we never mentioned what we're talking about in this episode. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. I got you. Now we're even. <laughs> Boo. Yay. Say the topic. <laughs> it doesn't, you can't retroactively type it in the show notes and hope it comes to pass. I have put it in the show notes. So when I copy this for next episode, it's there. Okay. Because <laughs> that's what I do. I copy and paste, I delete the news, and I go from there. Okay. So th- do you want to this... say the topic? I would love to say the topic, and then you can talk for an hour. So, okay. We this episode we are finally going to talk about Rune Factory 4S. Wow, Rune Factory! We promised this, I think, in like February. Oh, remember when time? Maybe even oh. before that. I can't remember. A long time ago. A long time ago. Long, long ago. So we're finally going to do it, and we're going to be enthusiastic about it. Yay! It's probably going to be slightly fuzzy, considering I have not played this game in months. Would you say that you have amnesia? (laughs) Oh, that's another thing. I was watching reviews and everyone was like, why do you start with amnesia in this game? I'm like, you don't understand. This is a serious trope. Like, come on. Uh, So you start with amnesia. (laughs) All right. Do we want to do like... An overview of the plot. Do we I want think to do that an sounds like a good characters? Plan. Yeah. <sighs> yes. All right. Let's start with story. So you're flying in a flying airship, uh, as is Rune Factory's way, and <laughs> all of a sudden these people come and they're like, "We're gonna steal your sparkly magic stone," and then they hit you on the head, and then you forget who you are because you're amnesia, and then they shove you off the airship, and you fall out of the sky and you land on a dragon. <laughs> Is this tracking with everybody? Yep. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I always forget how absurd the story is in this until I'm reminded of how absurd the story is in this. Um, And basically what happens is they were expecting a prince of the royal family to come to rule the town. uh, And you get mistaken for the royalty and give it all these responsibilities. And then the actual prince shows up and is like, eh, you could have my job. I just want to be a capitalist. <laughs> and but you know, you know, the worst thing about all that is that you constantly saying that you don't think you are. Uh-huh. <laughs> so like, many times they're like, you're, you're, you're the prince. And you're like, I don't think I am the prince. And they're like, no, no, you like, are. Well, you don't have memories, so you wouldn't know, would you? And it's like, <laughs> well, you're not wrong, but also... <laughs> So we're jumping um, to conclusions oh. here and then and then yeah the, the the prince shows up and he's just like oh well on you go <laughs> this, that's not how this works <laughs> it is now oh my word so as the prince slash princess depending oh, on your chosen gender uh which are of two options uh <laughs> Oh, 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 yes. Can we talk about that? Can we talk about the, the gender worst, choice? The worst possible gender option. <sighs> I'm just going to say, do you know that little Pokemon game that came out that's like brush your teeth on your phone? Yes. Literally, this Pokemon brush your teeth on your phone game did better at gender selection than this game did. <laughs> I'm just going to say. I, I just... Pokemon brush your teeth said, are you a boy, a girl, neither, or no option? <laughs> This game is like, are you scared of heights? I, I do, if so, like, you're a girl. It's <laughs> like, I mean, it's it. Yeah, it's not even that. Right. I, I brought this up with someone, and they were like, "Oh well, you know, you get to uh, change if you chose the wrong one." You're like, "That's not the point." It's what? <laughs> I just, I don't even. 
understand how this makes... It's like, I never thought that you could get worse than the old Animal Crossing one. <laughs> this is... Are you cute or cool? <laughs> just dreadful. I, I don't even... Oh my... The, like, there are so many... I don't think we can talk about this. There are just so many levels. You all know that this is dreadful. <laughs> it's horrific. Wow. Anyway. <laughs> yep. Well, as we do this, I would just like to remind everybody... And I will say, because this is Rune Factory 4 special, and there is some new stuff, and we'll probably go over it. But as we cover this, please keep in mind that this is a 2012 game, and about 98% of this game is completely unchanged from the original. So, yeah. It's a little wrong. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway. So, you're either a prince or a princess. If you thought it was bad... I assume you played as Lest, the character, the boy character. I did. Uh, if you play as Frey, uh, the girl character, the entire time they're like, you're the prince, and you're literally saying, I'm not even a boy. <laughs> 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 they're just what? like, and then, and then Arthur comes, and they're like, you're right, how did we even? <laughs> you're like, yeah, how did you what? even? What? Uh, <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this is the first 10 minutes of the game. Uh, <laughs> from there, it kind of opens up to be like more broad gameplay. You kind of play at your own, your own pace. There is a longer story. I can go through the whole three act story if you really want me to. Um, but primarily the focus is on you kind of befriend this mighty dragon of the land ventus will and the primary focus of the main storyline is ventus will is dying and a bunch of people have throughout history spoilers sorry <laughs> uh and a bunch of people have throughout history gone through a lot to try and keep ventus will alive there's kind of a connection between ventus will and the health of the land and uh, the entire story is essentially how do we save Venti? Uh, and in the end, you do. Spoilers. I assume Al doesn't care. Uh, and I assume well, you'll never get to Act 3. Well, is that no, correct? I, uh, well, okay, right. There are two questions there. One, I wouldn't say that I don't care. Right? That's, uh, that's a bit harsh, right? Um, okay. I, I, I care I guess... for Vent Venti. <laughs> I, I think it's about the only thing in the game that I care for. Um, <laughs> uh <laughs> But no, you're right. I'm never going to get to Act Three. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a game. Um, and then on top of that, as for the story, there's also a lot of, and we can kind of talk about characters here too if you want, because there's a lot of smaller story and smaller plot focusing around the development of the characters. Um, Rune Factory Four is kind of notorious for having the most dialogue. There is an egregious amount of dialogue in this game. Um, I hadn't you don't run noticed. in. <laughs> you had it noticed. Yeah, it's an extremely dialogue heavy game. Not just like in the intro and the storyline, but like when you talk to the villagers every day, like you don't get a lot of like repeating dialogue even after playing months and months and months in game. Um, and there's a lot of little story events where you'll just spend a few days going around town and talking to villagers and playing out little storylines and things like that. Um, and that's all of those things combined with the fact that it, it has a literal three act structure in the sense that if you played and you thought you finished the story and you saw the credits roll, you finished act one. <laughs> like it's a lot. So uh, that's kind of the story of it. We, uh, for other Rune Factory fans out there, we have a lot of recurring sort of themes in things like, <sighs> oh, who are those people again? Uh, the big, the same big bad guys is everywhere. Whose name I'm not going to say because I mess it up every time. Uh, things like that. Uh, you, there's a lot of lore like with venti and stuff that is expanding upon previous things. There's a lot of references back to older games, where, for example, you're using big fancy spells that were first introduced many games before, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a very, the, the whole game itself can be played independently, but it's also very referential to the, 
previous games of the series. So Yeah, and I don't think it's done in a way that certainly from what i've seen it's not done in a way that makes you confused right it's just the sort of mm-hmm. like uh that just goes over your head and that's fine yes. you don't notice it going over your head yeah so like if you're playing and you're like oh the omni gate i guess we're doing a fancy magic spell and i'm like oh i remember the last time yeah. i did that it was a big deal like so yeah. uh it makes sense either way it's just whether or not it you have a bigger picture to plug that into so yeah. uh do you want to do mechanics or characters next? Uh, let's go characters because we're we're in that zone just now. Okay. Speaking of story, I actually think one of the biggest, one of the best aspects of this game is its story and characters. I think a lot of the characters are like, especially if you play like the whole game, which I know is hard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, not judging on that one, but like the characters have good storylines. They really develop well. It's very interesting. Um And most of what is new to the special version of this game actually has to do with characters. So, like, what are, like, the new things are the newlywed mode. And there's, like, a DLC. It's called, like, Another Story or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I think it's that, yeah. Both of those are basically just um, adding to character storylines, essentially, and characterization of characters. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head... uh, the newlywed mode, you have to actually marry people in game, and so it can take a very long time to unlock all of them. And they're just little story things having to do with your character and your chosen spouse. And the another story is basically, like, it's essentially just getting the voice actors for every character to tell a little story about your characters after you're married. Um, and it's yeah. very cute. It, it could um, have been, it could have been like a separate, it could have been like a mobile app, right? Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and I mean, don't get me wrong. They are very cute. Like, um, I mean, some of them are dumb, but some of them are very <laughs> cute and they do a really good go- job of characterizing characters. Don't spend five dollars on it. You can see them all on YouTube. <laughs> it was actually. Um, did you know it was free for a month? Um, it was free for a month. And if yeah. you don't have it now, it's five dollars. <laughs> um, you can watch them all on YouTube. There are some very cute ones. I really like Dillis's. It's a whole story about like making a birthday cake for Frey with your daughter. And he's like, oh, no, she, it didn't work. And my kid is sad. I'd better cheer her up. And it's just it's very cute. Um, but they really don't add a lot of lot in terms of like gameplay and stuff like that. The new modes and like the mode in the DLC basically just add more characterization to these characters that are kind of a primary focus in the game uh as far as development goes anyway let's talk about some characters yeah um i will say i'm going to say this specifically your main characters are lest if you choose to be a boy and Frey if you choose to be a girl and i'm going to say this specifically because i think more than any other rune factory game and especially more than like a lot of our farming games we like to talk about these are very they are actual characters like separate from you as the player like they have personalities and things like that (laughs) that very clearly come through in the gameplay so if you're kind of like a person who really likes to have a a neutral body there for you to plug yourself into that is not what you're getting with this game so other than your main characters lest or fray uh let's kind of go down this list we're just going to hit some quick bullet points uh if you play as lest your bachelorette options are Margaret, who is a music elf. Forte, who is a a dragon knight. Um, (laughs) A dragon knight. (laughs) You're welcome. Sorry. Uh, (laughs) That was exactly the reaction I wanted. Thank you. Um, It's a pleasure. I am to please. You would think I would know this name, but I don't. Uh, Dol... 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 Dolly, Dolly, who is a goth with a ghost friend. Um, Xiao Pai, who is the cute foreigner character. Uh, <laughs> Glorica, who is sleepy. And Amber, who is a child. Um, <laughs> sorry, Amber is characterized as so childish and it kind of freaks me out. Um and not not that it freaks me out that her character is childish. I think that's fine. It <laughs> freaks me out in the sense that you can marry her, which I think is less fine. Um, 
<laughs> do, do you have anything to say about any of these? <sighs> no. <laughs> I think, you know, one of my issues, um, I think, with this game is that I, I never really got into any of the characters, which is weird. And mm-hmm. I don't know. It, it might just be kind of one, a higher level. I wasn't a huge fan of the game in general, and that's mm-hmm. why. Um, I don't think it was anything against the individual characters. It's just that I never really, none of them grabbed me, if that makes yeah. sense. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'll have a lot That's to say fine. about mechanics, don't worry. <laughs> Perfect. If you play as Frey, your bachelor options are Vishnal, who is a very energetic butler, voiced by, I'm pretty sure the same guy who played What's his face at Oran High School Host Club? And it's very startling to me. Um, <laughs> Dillis, who is a cranky horseman. Um, Keel, who is maybe 19 and is really into books. Arthur, who is the prince, the actual prince who is coming and is also an aggressive capitalist, which is a shame because I like his character, except that he's also an aggressive capitalist. Um, <laughs> Doug, who is a dwarf uh and his whole thing is that he's a fun casual guy who believes a lot of conspiracy theories um that's a big plot in like the main story of him figuring out i was lied to (laughs) um and then leon who is who is yoko karama from yu yu haka show um (laughs) um, (laughs) ah yes now i understand (laughs) My Thank fellow... you for that reference that I definitely know. <laughs> My fellow Yu Yu Hakusho fans, <laughs> shout out. <laughs> Did you know that when I was a kid, I actually made a Yu Yu Hakusho fan website? Um, <laughs> back feel... when you had like dial up internet and stuff, like I the fe- GeoCities days. <laughs> I feel like you've mentioned it before. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if you know what I'm talking about, please tweet me. <laughs> um and then other than that your other typical villagers are uh there is Volcanon who is the head butler guy who just is uh, his character is Deus Ex Machina. Um there's Jones the doctor and his wife Nancy the nurse. Um there is Lin Fa who is Xiao Pai's mother and they run the bathhouse essentially. Uh, Ventus will, of course, the dragon. There is uh, Porgoline, the typical uh, a fat foodie person, mm-hmm. uh, because we all know that if you're into food, that inherently makes you fat, because those yep. things are related. Uh, That's how it works. There is Pico, who is Dolly's little ghost friend. There is Illuminata, who is way too energetic and really likes to investigate things and her name is illuminata um there's blossom the old lady and then bado the blacksmith who likes to lie about things um and then you get occasional guests coming into town who are characters from previous games which you probably didn't know that al uh so you get raven and barrett and good old king ethelbird he's not a good old king um (laughs) That kind of show up at uh, Raven and Barrett show up as traveling merchants and also have little bits to do with the main storyline. Ethelbird is not a good king. Um, And those are the primary characters. I know I didn't go too deep into any of them. I feel like if I did, it would be a lot of let me tell you the entire 300 story, 300 hour story (laughs) of this game. (laughs) So... Uh, do you have any questions? Is there anything you want me to elaborate on? Is there anyone you're curious about? So, um, so I guess the only the only character I, I really uh, cared about was, um, and I've already forgotten his name, Mister Butlerman. Um, the the uh, the Bachelor one or the Deus Ex Machina one? The De- Deus Ex Machina one, if, if you Volcanon. But yes, that's his name. Ah, yes, I remember because it's like Volcanion. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Same stats. I was like, so. it's like a Pokemon, but I couldn't remember which one doesn't help. Vol- Volcanon. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, he's interesting. <laughs> yeah, he, his energy levels are through the roof. <laughs> it's too much. Yeah. He's constantly screaming and wailing very loudly. I do appreciate that as a very manly man. He cries a lot, Yeah, which is not something you get to see a lot. But also, he has so much energy as a as a primarily more low key kind of an introverted kind of a person. I feel like Volcanon is the kind of person who I could not handle being around for a long period of time. <laughs> but he's also very good at his job, and also things that you did not think was his job, like building bridges and destroying large obstacles. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so like in the big map, so like the whole map of the the game is there's the main town and then it kind of expands out to like the wilderness around the castle where you go into like dungeons and stuff. And the there are portions of the map that are blocked off and unlock at different points in the story and it's always Volcanon who shows up and is like, oh yes, I was meaning to destroy those tree branches that are larger than our entire castle for you. Let me do that real quick. And it's wild yes dedication to the job uh he's just like this is the job of a butler and i'm like do you know what a butler is <laughs> so yeah it's wild i forgot eliza how could you like how could i forget eliza this is one of my so i'm a character person there are so many characters in this even the mailbox that gives you your quests is a character whose name is eliza who Almost manages to be a good non-binary character, except for that at some point a lot in Eliza's story, they're like, hey, do you think I'm a boy or a girl? <laughs> and then if you don't say, and if you're like, I don't know, I'm not going to answer this question. And if you don't pick boy or girl, you can never continue with them. Um, oh. You literally are forced to choose, and it's very frustrating. <laughs> so even even your quest box is a character. Uh, shout out to Eliza. Yeah, I feel like most of the discussion around that will be in the mechanic stuff. It's but it's very interesting. Uh, the well, first of all, the the no, let's talk about that in mechanics. Okay, let's talk about mechanics. All right, mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, the quest box is interesting in that. Uh, it's weirdly limiting to start with, mm -hmm. um, but in a confusing way. And I don't know whether this is just me or whether you had this issue the first time you played as well. Um, or maybe it's similar in old games. I don't know. Um, it's not obvious that you're limit limited to start with. Uh, they it's weird. I think it's mentioned in passing at one point. And then you can do, so like the first day you can do like one thing. But then it lets you see what else you could theoretically be able to do in the future, but you can't do it just now. Mm -hmm. And and it's not quite clear why. I think I think in a tutorial sense they're trying to because the tutorial is half you getting lectured at by other characters and half you doing uh -huh. these quests. It's the quest yes. portion of the tutorial is kind of like the tail end of the tutorial. And I think what they were trying to do was like pace you so that you're only learning one thing at a time. But they did this, but they did it in this way of like, and here's what else you can do, except that you can't actually do it, yes. which for a not real time game is very frustrating because you're like, okay, I guess I'll just have to go to bed and come back in like 38 seconds. It's very, it would have been better if they just said, come back tomorrow and not let you see the options of what else it is. Yeah. I think that's the confusing bit. Yeah. Uh, it's weird. <laughs> it's weird. So I'm not going to argue on that one. Other than that, I think it's quite a cool mm -hmm. part of the game. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I like anything that kind of directs you towards different things. Um, and mm -hmm. it's obviously very useful for the tutorial. Uh, mm -hmm. We like to talk about tutorials. Should we talk tutorial? Do you want to talk about the half an hour of dialogue that is the tutorial? Uh, there's so much dialogue in this tutorial. And it's I'm never quite... So... The, the problem with skipping it, right, is you never quite know which is what, what you have to care about, what story mm -hmm. and what's not. Because they slip bits yeah. in randomly. Yeah, it's there is no distinction whatsoever from storyline and tutorial in this, and it's all in the same format, and it's all jumbled together, and it's kind of frustrating. Uh, not how I would design a tutorial. <laughs> so yeah, it's I part, and it's. I think that's a big part of what 
I know a lot of people get frustrated because the intro to this game is so long. Like, it takes a long yeah. time. It takes maybe half an hour to an hour, depending on how fast you read, to get to the actual playing of the game. For me, I think it was and about I... two weeks. <laughs> that sounds about right. And it's very frustrating. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe Rune Factory 5 will be better. <laughs> we'll see. Oh. I have high hopes for Rune Factory 5, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um, we'll get there. Yeah, I don't think there's any, really anything else to say about the tutorial. It's fine if you take away all the dialogue, the get through stuff, the quest box is interesting, blah, 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 whatever. Mm -hmm. um, what is with... I'm just going to bump around these things as I think about them. What is with the teleporting? Okay. <laughs> because you have this button that instantly teleports you back to your bed, which the first time you play it, press it, you're like, oh, okay, right, well, I guess I'm back at my bed then. <laughs> I was in the middle of a battle, and I just I appeared next to my bed. <laughs> uh, Sounds about right. Um... <laughs> Weird. <laughs> so they do a really bad job of explaining this, obviously. Um... <laughs> Clearly, that's why I'm asking. <laughs> yes. So in combat, there's kind of like two different aspects of this. There is you have your weapons, you fight things with you. It's it's a very, very basic hack and slash kind of a mechanic. Yeah. Um, And then the other thing you have is magic spells. And you can, you get like different spells and they're used for different things. Everything from throwing a fireball at an enemy to for some reason there is a magic spell to greet villagers where you just press it and it goes, hello. <laughs> <laughs> which th honestly as a more low-key introverted person it feels like magic sometimes saying hello to a stranger <laughs> uh i understand uh but by default because the very first thing you get is the teleport home spell and but it just automatically defaults assi default assigns it to Wait, the spell button are you telling me that you can change that I'm pretty sure you can. Oh, would they have told me if I'd kept playing the game? No. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you kind of just have to figure it out because there's two oh. different buttons, I think, on the Switch that you can assign spells to. And when you're going into assigning spells, you can just... Ass you know... I may be wrong, but... <sighs> you know the, my problem, right? I think you either... <laughs> you either need to explain everything or nothing. Like this... This, we are going to spend a billion hours explaining things to you, but not actually explain useful things to you. Oh. We're going to explain to you how to dive, but not how to swim. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing a recurring theme here. I just... Yeah. Mm, get me it's in the right mindset. Either I need to figure yeah. things out, or I don't. Don't confuse me by doing half of it. Mm-hmm. Uh... So there's that. <laughs> While we're at it, do you want to talk about the rest of the combat mechanics? Oh, the ah, my word. Right. I can it's special. <laughs> it's I mean it's fine. It, ah, it's like if you if you've not played any of these games before, right? Take uh Stardew Valley combat right because i'm sure most people playing the, what listen to this podcast have played Stardew Valley, right? Take Stardew Valley combat. Um Remove all any kind of emphasis on skill from it um, and add fireballs. There's a certain amount of skill you need in this, and primarily in the sense of not for your average enemies for the most part, but usually when you get to the bosses, there's an amount of skill required in the you need to be able to observe the patterns of attacks from your bosses and work around them sort of way yeah yeah, yeah it's more in a case of like the, with the actual combat i was meaning well i mean i guess the whole thing is combat fine that's an argument i get that um it's more just like i don't really feel like i have any control over the weapons yes the the the, the actual use of weapon, weapons is a very much it's a very basic button mashing hack and slash. Um, just hit A a bunch. If you really want to get fancy, you can go with how many times you hit in the button and in what speed. That can give you different types of combos, uh, but not in a complicated way. It's basically the more times you mash A, the more times 
you attack into a combo of attacks. Yeah. Um, which there can be a little bit of strategy for that. There, There's, I think, six or eight different types of weapons. And there's some types of weapons that if you go to, like, the full complete combo, like, the end combo moves can do things like move you pretty far across the map and stuff like that. And that can be an advantage or a, or a disadvantage depending on the situation. But there's not terribly much strategy or anything involved in it. And even if you end up doing things like that, it's you can completely ignore that aspect of it and be pretty fine for the most part, depending on your difficulty level. You know what I mean? Uh, so yeah. you can change difficulty levels in this game. That's one of the things they added was a new hell mode that's so hard, <laughs> um, which I think is primarily about the enemies doing like a significantly larger amount of damage. So uh, there's no like major strategy upgrade or anything. It's just that higher They're numbers <laughs> yeah you so gotta press a more yeah Just do it longer fun it's fun this is fun grinding yes um so there's combat there is. Uh, <laughs> it, that exists that is a thing yes so i will say one of the things i really like about this game and i think part of the reason i like this series so much is because it's kind of a jack of all trades and a master of nothing, but in a way that I'm fine with, where there's a whole bunch of different types of mechanics. So, like, there's the whole combat mechanic. There's the whole, like, character life sim mechanic of getting to know the characters and marrying and having children, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then there's the whole farming thing. <laughs> yeah. And then there's also a huge crafting mechanic. And this game doesn't do any of those the best. <laughs> But they're all fine, and it, it, it what it does the best is doing all of those fine at the same time, which is not something a lot of games can do, actually. Um, yeah. I'm not saying it's great or that it's ideal, but I will say yeah. there's not a lot of games where you can have four or five different mechanics that are major functions in the game where there isn't at least one that is a complete failure. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I, I think that's fair. And I think I'd agree with that. I'm just not sure I'd then take the jump to that makes it an enjoyable game to play. <laughs> oh, I'm not saying that that inherently makes an enjoyable an enjoyable game to play. I'm saying that's something I, enjo I personally enjoy about it. Yeah, because it, fair. like I was talking earlier about, I kind of like to, like part of the reason I like Mara is I like to be able to do different things whenever I feel like doing different things. And this kind of enables me to do that in a way that it's not, not like I don't ignore one part of the game or one mechanic because it's just that bad, which I have done yeah. in other games before. So I think it does that fine. Let's talk about some other mechanics. Farming. <sighs> there is farming. Farming exists. Uh... The farming's pretty basic. I do enjoy being able to pick up giant stacks of things and throwing them for no reason. It's so ridiculous. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, like, I, I, this is not a complaint. Right, it is fun, but it's just you just look ridiculous carrying. It's very silly. <laughs> yes, because when you when you pick things up in this game, there's like a little visual of your sprite carrying one of those things, and then you pick up the second one, and instead of being like, I just continue this stack of holding one piece of wood, it's yeah. like you're gonna hold uh, one wood on top of one wood on top of one, and you're just like running around with like a stack of like nine turnips or something, just running around the map. And like, there's clearly physics involved because the top of the stack is running behind yeah, you. Yeah. And like, <laughs> they put in a lot of thought into this, and it's just kind of silly. It's very, I think it's very charming, but it's just ridiculous and needless. Yeah. But <laughs> um, the farming in this is pretty basic. I will say, one of the interesting things is you don't have to farm crops in season you can farm crops you can you can grow fall crops in spring it's just that they're gonna take a lot longer and you're gonna get less for it and i think that's kind of interesting as opposed to most farming games where the day it turns to summer all of your <laughs> spring crops die <laughs> like you yeah, know they I mean? turn into dust like you know they're just zapped with a cannon or something yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah um yeah, I agree. That's that's nice. That's nice. I, I feel like there are also, and it has been a while, so I might be kind of half remembering this, but I feel like there are too many tools for farming in this game. I think it's about the same amount as usual. Like you have your, you have your axe and your hammer for wood and stone. You have 
<sighs> you have a hoe. You have a ho, watering ho, ho. can. Ho, ho, ho. Uh, there's something. So so there's there's a bunch of stuff that's on your farm that you have to clear out. And I feel like there was a tool that you needed for something that I can't remember what it was. Oh, I really should have played the game again. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there was an extra tool that you needed to clear stuff off the farm that felt just so unnecessary. But maybe I'm Is it the scythe? Which maybe. is a notoriously underused item in all farming games. Maybe. Um, I don't know. It annoyed me. I, I think that's fair. I think for the farming implements in particular, it's the standard lineup uh, that you see in every single game. But I think it's also kind of compounded by the fact that your farming tools share space in the tool category with all of your weapons and yeah. <laughs> everything like that. So it can, can it can become very cumbersome. Like you just have so many independent items to deal with. It can be very frustrating. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which is why. Bleeding into other things. But yeah, the, the inventory management is not, not great. The You can really tell this is a 2012 game <laughs> based on the inventory management. <laughs> um, I think that is one of the worst aspects of this game for sure. Um. Yes, and this, I think this it's, game it's, is definitely an enhanced port, not a remake. You can yes, tell. <laughs> absolutely. And I think it's also, I think a significant portion of that, mm, I think a good portion of that <laughs> has to do with the fact that uh, you're taking a game that was on two screens that's now on one. Yeah. And I think that adds to a lot of the frustration because they kind of had to work a way of cramming that's two screens of stuff point. into one space. and Yeah. Sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. And in no ways did they tell you how to use the tools they made to compensate for it. For example, yeah. when you go into your inventory, there's always a box that is like, here's the description of this item. And it's very, very small. Like, I play only in handheld. You can't read that text. It's so small. Oh. And it took me maybe like six or eight gameplay hours to figure out that they had added a button to let you zoom that box out. So it was bigger so you could actually read it. Because they literally never tell you. Um. I feel like everything's small as well in this game, right? Yes. Like, everything's um, just slightly too small. Mm-hmm. I feel. And it did not feel small on the 3DS, I will say that. <laughs> but it's interesting. Yeah. I, th I think that's a an unintended consequence of just making this a direct port. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's some issues with things like that. Uh, farming's basic. Same. There's a fertilizer bin. You toss anything into it and it fertilizes your fields. Uh, you can grow dungeons uh, yep. after what? a certain point in the game. What? You heard, you heard me. <laughs> I don't, do I want to open this door? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it, there's not a lot to it. Basically, you can get seeds that grow instead of vegetables. You grow a big vegetable dungeon and you can go in the dungeon and battle the dungeon. That's it's, a cool mechanic, I guess. Yeah, it's fun, except that it takes a billion years to get there. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, Because that was, I feel, I could be entirely wrong. I'm not going to lie. It's been a long time since this game came out in 2012. Um, <laughs> But I feel like that Who was knows? like a big advertising point of just like, you not only grow vegetables, but dungeons. Um, <laughs> So it's weird that it comes in so late in in the game um so you have your well it got combat because you go into different dungeons and fight things you have farming oh you can also have animals it's the monsters that you fight and murder even though you yes. don't really murder them you can tame them to be your creatures and uh, your slaves essentially right like that's weird yeah um uh, <laughs> like that I, i'm not okay with this <laughs> And suddenly you realize why I never have creatures on my farm. <laughs> but I just, it just feels a little bit, especially now it feels a little bit close to home. It's like these creatures that are subhuman uh, that you're enslaving and making do your, your work on your farm. Yeah. And I think. And your royalty. Um, I think it's the kind of thing that. <laughs> yeah. There's some really <laughs> questionable power dynamics in this game. Um see why I hate the swimsuit bonus oh, thing. Oh just um, oh that 
it wasn't weird until you explained how it worked. And now that I've played the game and I've seen how these things work, the, the I, by royal DLC decree, demand so that all weird. eligible bachelors oh. must be half naked at all times oh. for my pleasure. It's so awkward. Um, oh. Not into that. <laughs> not into that. Um, but it's, I think what, I think a lot of people probably don't really think about that aspect because you can just go and tame a cow or a giant chicken but then you realize you can also tame orcs which are very yeah humanoid in yeah. the way that a lot of fantasy tends to be like this is a code for black people slaves yeah. <laughs> like yeah exactly. and it's really uncomfortable yeah um thanks i know that's a very common trope in all of fantasy but tolkien did a really bad job of that of really Real, t there's some really racist stuff in Tolkien's work, and because that's a fundamental cornerstone of a lot of our modern fantasy, it just kind of a lot of people don't realize it. They're like, "Oh, well, this is just a typical thing." It's like, no, this actually is primarily inspired by something with not so great influences. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, it's moving awkward. away from slaves. <laughs> so. <laughs> So other than that, uh, so we have combat, we have farming, uh, we have social. There is a, I will say, not as much as Portia, because Portia's entire main plot is dependent upon crafting. But crafting is maybe the most essential mechanic in this game. And I know that sounds weird to say. <laughs> um there's a huge, huge crafting aspect to this game. You cr you cook food and you make a potion, like health potions and medicines and stuff. And you make tools and armor and things like that. And there's actually, there are points in the game where if you do not craft your own armor and weapons, you cannot progress through the story. Like there is, there is a certain point in this game where the difficulty spike is like 90 degrees upwards. Um, and if you don't have the materials to do it, or if you haven't been focusing on crafting, you have to stop everything you're doing and progressing the story and do all of the ca crafting catch up. Um, it is a hugely important aspect of the game and they never tell you that. <laughs> um, it, I will say it does have one of my favorite things in any game ever, which is that the method of learning how to make things is through eating bread. And let me tell you, <laughs> if I could learn things by eating bread, I would know everything in the world. <laughs> I love bread. Um, I love bread. I'm like the I love cats video, but it's bread. And I love bread. I love every kind of bread. I just want to... I can't... Anyway, I... <laughs> I don't know if that video was as fundamental to your... A mental development as it was mine uh no do you, you don't even know what i'm talking about do you i, I don't i just kind of accept these things now though like oh. there are things i don't know that's okay that's, that's fine. fine that's fine i feel like that is that is an older internet meme that is probably outdated it was basically just like this woman was making a video dating video and she just keeps circling back to how much she loved cats and she's like crying over how much she loves cats and i'm just like i love this video <laughs> Part of the issue, I think, of earlier internet memes is that they were very um, geographically centered. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. there were a lot of memes that, that didn't break out of countries. Um, whereas yeah. that, that's less of a thing now because... We're, our, the internet is significantly... Global. It's not entirely, but it is significantly more globalized than yeah. it used to be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but hey, Rune I'll Factory. I'll send you that video later. I, I look forward <laughs> to watching it. Uh, anyway, Rune Factory. So the crafting is a huge deal in this game. Uh, did you get into any crafting? I, I was, not really. A wee bit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty standard. I will say it's one of the more frustrating aspects of this game. Are so. The crafting is broken down into... There's different things you can craft at different sort of like stations. But the problem is that the stations you buy as items and have to place. And there's like 30,000 of them. And trying to find room for them all is absurd. So like if you want to craft medicines, you have to go get the medicine station from the doctor. 
And if you want to, you blacksmithing takes things from the blacksmith. Yeah. And then cooking, you have to go buy fifteen different apparatuses to cook things. <laughs> it's the make something to make something to make something to eventually get the thing that you want. Yeah. Yes, but in a way that I don't like because what it is is it's just. Do you want to cook some recipes? First, you have to buy a knife, and then independently, you have to buy an oven, and then independently, you have to buy a stove. And it's like, just sell me a kitchen. Like, <laughs> come on. It's so frustrating. It's just like, do you need three fridges? Yes. Okay, have three independent fridges instead of just having one fridge with a lot of storage space. Um, it's frustrating. Um, there is a mechanic where you can run your own store. Have you ever tried that? I feel like I haven't even played this game. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really big game. And if you don't spend a lot of time, like this game can easily go like three to 500 hours. This, like, is, a, this is a Rochelle game. <laughs> yes. Um, the, I, I personally think the shop is dumb. You basically just like walk out to a little shop. Th- you have to put items in a box and then you walk out and this door from your bedroom and it's just like, have you ever seen that kind of like curved window thing next to Eliza? No? Uh. So outside of the front of the castle, there's Eliza. And next yeah. to it is this like curved little bump out of the castle that has like... Is that not just a door in back in? Um, It's a door out. You can't go in it from the outside. It's oh. between Eliza and the door into your house. <sighs> <laughs> I tried. Look, I tried. I really tried. I feel this happens every six months or so, but I really try. I promise I tried to play this game. I really did. <laughs> it's okay. So you can go out of that little thing and then you just stand there and wait for villagers to come to you to buy something. It's dumb. Um, oh, I'm not a fan of it. That's weird. Um, There have been things like this in previous games, and I think this is perhaps the... I think this is worse executed than the shop you can have in the GameCube game, A Wonderful Life. Uh, (laughs) So that's where I stand on that. Are you saying something was good in that game? (laughs) I love A Wonderful Life. (laughs) Let's not get into that again. Uh, We should talk about proclamations, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. Okay. So speaking of abuses of power. I feel like that's the most (laughs) unique thing about this game. Yes. So, obviously, you are a prince slash princess. Uh, and so, as you do things in the game, you earn... I'm just going to call them royalty points because I do not want to continue saying prince slash princess. Um, you earn royalty points that are supposed to be, like, lore-wise. It's supposed to be, like, this is a representation of how how much respect and trust your people have for you as the leader. Um, Mechanics-wise, it's just a point system. Uh, where you have a board in the castle in the main room where you talk to Venti that is basically, you can make, you use these points to buy royal decrees. And it's everything from using your trust and respect from the people to buy a larger backpack for yourself <laughs> to to instituting things like festivals and opening shops and et cetera, et cetera. Um, Which some make sense. Yes, I think that as the leader of a town, it makes sense to say, let's have a festival where we throw beans at each other. That makes sense to me. (laughs) Oh, I forgot about that. (laughs) Um, That makes sense to me. Saying, thank you for respecting me as your leader. I think I personally deserve a very large house. (laughs) It's a little less. (laughs) This, this, This feels like... This feels like capitalism. This feels like a CEO going, thank you for your work. I think I deserve a $250,000 Christmas bonus this year. Um, and I don't like it. Um, because you also, literally, you can add a room to your house. You add fields to your farming fields, It's, it's important that your, your rulers have a comfortable life. And they will make life better for you in turn. By letting you throw beans at each other. <laughs> It's it's trickle down theory. Trickle down beanomics. Em- emphasis on the trickle. Um, <laughs> um <laughs> Is that enough for that? Yeah, it's it's I, I think it's a really interesting mechanic. Uh and yeah, sometimes it's really weird. Uh mm-hmm. 
and it kind of takes a little bit of getting used to because it's so different from lots of other things um yeah i think the weird thing is that because of this you can essentially like completely miss the possibility of having festivals which Mm -hmm. was a weird thing for me right like every other farming game i've played you have here is the festivals and these festivals happen you don't need to go to them but they're happening anyway Mm -hmm. whereas here it's like you have to make them happen yes there are a very small number of default festivals and if you want to do more than like one festival a month in game you have to save up the points to decree we're gonna have a bean festival or we're gonna have a monster fighting pokemon festival are there any more mechanics or are we pretty much done with mechanics um i feel like we're getting there i i mean the only thing i could really have else explain is that the festivals are essentially mini games yeah that's it they're just mini games you play okay that's it. so I, we always do this kind of wrapping up bit should we start off with 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 my thoughts overall thoughts on the game and then we can get to some more constructive thoughts on the game from you sure uh i'm not a fan of this game <laughs> <laughs> who'd have thought <laughs> just in case anyone couldn't tell uh, I couldn't tell by the way you talk about it. <laughs> um, uh, but I feel like it's I'm not a fan of this game in the same way that I wasn't a fan of Animal Crossing New Leaf and not in the same way that I'm not a fan of My Time at Portia in that mm-hmm. I reckon I could enjoy a Rune Factory 5 just like how I thought I would like uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons and I was right about that. Um, mm-hmm. I just feel like it's just not just it's just yeah would i have enjoyed it in 2012 had i played it maybe maybe i don't know mm-hmm. we'll probably never find out but and it's really hard to explain what it is that i don't like about this game i think part of the issue is what you were talking about you know the jack of all trades master of none i, I would reword that as meh of everything right like <laughs> sure everything's fine but nothing's fun y- you know um mm-hmm. and you know one of the one of the big things is the 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 characters and getting to know them but in general that's my least favorite thing about games uh so that would explain why that's not really a thing for me and everything else it, just nothing excites me about it really yeah but, uh so i guess from you there are two things right so obviously you you would have thoughts about the game as a whole but also what are your thoughts about this version of the game? Okay. So I will say it makes sense to me that this isn't your jam. I think the strongest suit of this game is the characters and story. Yeah. And if that's less your jam, of course, it's not going to be as appealing. That is entirely my jam. So, of course, it's <laughs> appealing to me. Um, I think I enjoy I'm fine with mechanics just being fine and having a lot to do. I've talked about this a couple times already. I like being able to do all the different things just at whatever pace and whenever I feel like doing whatever. Uh, That's something I'm really into. And I think that's probably why I enjoy this game so much. Um, In addition to, I really like character and story and that is a primary focus of this game. I think so far as the special version on the Switch goes, I would say if you've never played a Rune Factory game before, it might be worth getting into. Um, and I would I, I would specifically tell you to get this game for the same reason I would tell you to get the newest Animal Crossing game, which is it is the newest. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's the newest. Yeah. It has the most attention paid to it. It's going to a- a- offend your modern game gamer sensibilities the least. <laughs> but, That's such a good way of winding it. Um, but that being said, if you've already played this game or if you're not really into playing things that feel dated. This feels dated because it is literally the exact same game as was on the 3DS. Mm. Um, Like I said, basically the only difference is those couple extra little new modes. Yeah. And like I said, those are literally nothing other than extra characterization for the characters. Um, Yeah. I I guess this is, this is like comparing compared to Pokemon, right? This is like, uh virtual was, console games as opposed to the remake i was going to make that exact we're on comparison. the same wavelength what can i yes, say this is buying this game is essentially the exact same thing as buying pokemon crystal on the 3ds eShop, 
where it's the exact same game. You're just playing it on a fancy new system, but it's still a really old game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's kind of how I feel about it. I would say if you're kind of on the fence about playing older games, just wait for Rune Factory 5. And if it never comes, then you never have to play <laughs> Rune Factory. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's the thing, right? Like, why should someone play this when Rune Factory 5 is coming? And it's meant to be coming this year, right? It just it, it seems like yeah. such a weird thing. They announced them both at the same time. Well, that I think that was part of the... We, I think we've talked about this before, where that was part of the problem with them delaying putting out Rune Factory 4S. They had a good reason to, which they yeah. eventually told us. Yeah. But the problem with that was that it was supposed to come out significantly <laughs> yeah. earlier to be the game... To sort of whet your appetite for Rune Factory 5. <laughs> but because it got pushed up so close to the presumed release date of Rune Factory 5, it made it feel more like this is the installment you should be playing. And it kind of yeah undercut its purpose there. Yeah, that makes sense. Although we know that it's so, not coming out this year. Let's be honest, right? It's not coming yeah. out this year. It's July and we've heard nothing else. It's not coming out this year. <laughs> yeah. I will be truly shocked if it does. And... I guess that's it. It's like it's just the same reason you might go play an old Pokemon game for the th three months before the new one comes out. It's just that you want nostalgia. it, but it's not here yet. So you play the old stuff for nostalgia. Yeah. yeah. So that makes sense. Well, thank you for finally getting through this, and I can go sell that game again. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Look, I I tried, and I'm glad I bought it physically. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's fine um maybe you'll like rune factory 5 more I, I i hope so because like i like the theory of it um mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> and I, I, do, I, I do enjoy characters like i really loved so many of the characters in stardew you know and mm -hmm. i love so many of the characters in littlewood like i i and i love char some of the characters in summer in mara like i love the characters i just didn't get grabbed by them this time i guess yeah and i think that's also a factor of more than most games the character and story in this game are very dependent on you playing long term yeah so a lot of the things are about slowly getting to know these characters over a lot of time and if you if they don't catch you right from the beginning you're not going to invest the time to get to the point where they would have caught you in the first place does that make sense i think so <sighs> Well, if you would like to tell me why exactly I dislike this game, uh, <laughs> you can tweet me at uh, the Scott Bot. There we go. I remembered. Uh, you did it. Uh, Scott has one T. Uh, if you want to tell me if you were also a Yoko Karama fan, <laughs> you can tweet at me at Miss Delaney with Delaney with two L's, and I promise I'll start checking my Twitter again. Oh, that's quite a promise. Yeah, I'll actually, I'll actually answer you now that I have less <laughs> significant anxiety coming from Twitter. Uh, just unfollow everyone; it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, I'll just unfollow <laughs> literally everyone. Um, it's fine. Just, just un turn off retweets on me. That's all you need to do. I'm not doing anything <laughs> else. It's just retweets. <laughs> uh, if you want to uh, find out the podcast on Twitter, tweet at us, follow all of the retweets I make. I make a lot of retweets because there's a lot of stuff about farming <laughs> games. Uh, you mm -hmm. can find us at THS Pod. If you would rather email us, you can do that on the website, uh, harvestseason.club, where you can also find a link to our Patreon if you would like to support us. It's the beginning mm -hmm. of a new month. It's a great time to do that. Um, uh, I think that's everything. I think so. Well, until next time, uh, have, have a good a harvest. Good harvest. <laughs>The Harvest Season is created by Rochelle Delaney and Al McKinley, with support from our pro farmer level patrons, Kevin and Stuart. Our art is done by Micah the Brave, and our music is done by Nick Burgess. Feel free to visit our website, harvestseason.club, for show notes and links to things we discussed in this episode. Thanks for listening!
Oh boy, the rain's getting very heavy. Can you hear that? Oh. Yeah, I can. I mean, I have to turn my thing up, but yeah. Mm. It's I wish fine. it was raining here. It, it, it's doing the raining at the point where I'm not saying much, so that's good. Yeah, I'm just like looking out my window. I'm like, it's just hot and sunny. Uh, 